How was your chemistry exam? Okay, never mind. I really hope you all done well. All right. Okay, so forget about chemistry. Next week, you're going to have bio exam. I really waited this long uh, to upload my video to go live so that uh, I can, so that you will be prepared for bio. All right. Okay, so without wasting much time. I know that the uh, topic today is a very interesting topic. Okay, you have a lot of um, interested, don't know what exactly that I'm going to tell you. All right, but be warned. I'm going to warn you beforehand. These are brutal truth. Be ready for that. All right, I'm not going to sugarcoat my words. I'm not going to play with words. No, these are some insider's view that I honestly think every candidate must and should know in order for them to know how to maneuver their scripts all right in order to obtain the maximum result from their answer scripts all right okay so without wasting much time so let's go into it um yeah so this is yeah look at the title how to make the examiner fall in love they have to have they have to fall in love with your answer script okay so this is an insider's view all right it's a disclaimer <laughs> of course all right and brutal truth no sugar coating of words all right okay so yeah let's go into it uh let me use the laser point hmm all right okay so yeah okay so first of all guys one thing that you all need to understand that your examiners are humans all right we have no feelings for you that is like i said i am going to be brutally true give you give you the brutal truth to you i'm going to be super honest i'm going to tell you what exactly you all mean to us when we are when we see an answer script okay you guys are just numbers you are just one ic number and you're just numbers you're just numbers to us we have no feelings or whatsoever for you all right and the relationship between me and you is going to last maximum 20 minutes so in that 20 minutes you as the candidate must find a way to impress me in order just say i'm the examiner i'm your examiner all right if i you get me as your examiner you are damn lucky <laughs> okay but just say just say this is a situation all right so i am an examiner okay so for me i don't know which where are you from who are you boy or girl chinese i don't know all that i don't i, I have i don't want to know I, and i have no feelings or whatsoever for you you are just a number for me your relationship with me is going to last maximum 20 minutes all right but in that relationship with you i hope you we can have a mutualistic relationship uh whatever it is i still my, I must base my argument in biology terms all right that is so me all right okay we are hoping that our relationship will be a mutualistic relationship where you scratch my back and i scratch you back all right you present your answers the way we want and we will be just awarding my marks to you like nobody's business and move on and just get on with the work and go to the next trip all right so that is exactly what an examiner wants to do we are just like so tired we are just so like uh, so we have yeah like i said this is an insider view okay so this is exactly how we feel we feel like when we see a script it's like yeah this is what you are to us all right we are not your teachers okay we are not your teachers we are not your parents we have no feelings for you okay so we just hope that you just present your answers the way we wanted it and the way the marking scheme is uh, giving us so that we just can award marks and total it up and just move on to the next grade all right so how are we going to go about that so that is the biggest question here right okay so we always ex ex your answers to be short and sweet all right no beating around the bush no sugar-coated words that is why i chose the the the, the picture laddu for you <laughs> being an indian 
all right like we always want that short and sweet answers no matter what we don't want you beating around the bushes we don't want too many conjunctions no 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 we don't want all that we don't want definitely we don't want all that all right so like like i said here in this avoid long winded sentences with too many conjunctions dears you have to understand so when we are marking your answer script if you are the first answer script that you met with that we get we will be excited we will be super excited to see your answers you know if there's the first script yeah we will be spending some time but imagine you are the 300th script of the day of whatever the duration that we are marking do you think we have time to reread your answers again and again when you have such a long sentence no darling we don't we definitely don't all right so that is why look at the example one of the students ah huh? look at the example i said plant cell has cell walls whereas animal cells don't thus plant cells have fixed shape and animal cells don't more have Come on, that's a three points combined in one sentence. Why am I saying this? Okay, you may say, "Oh, these examiners are pretty lazy." No, that is not the issue. Okay, the thing, ah, uh, the thing is, we are, uh, ah, uh, we might miss your point. Okay, we might miss your point because there are too many points there. We might miss it. So in the in the in in the event of we missing some points, who are the losers? Not me. It's going to be the candidate, isn't it? So that is why. Okay. So avoid long-winded sentences with too many conjunctions. All right, and give your answers please straight to the point. We don't want formalities. We don't want in your essays. We don't want introductions. We don't want conclusions. No, dears. We don't want all that. we just one straight forward point on the dot answers both side okay so this is what every examiners are hoping in an answer script we just want our work to be done all right so this is what remember mutualistic first second short and sweet all right so this is how my slides are going to go it's going to go like this <laughs> next we want you to answer the question all right it is really important because we see this issue year in year out okay we see this issue why am i highlighting all this to you is because this is what we see every year not only in school level and also in spm level right okay answer the question we want you to answer the question not regurgitate again bio is coming you know i don't want to say vomit <laughs> we are regurgitate what have you read answering the question is the most important thing all right so thus that is why we always tell the students or the candidates you know not the candidates of course we teach the students spend time reading the question it doesn't matter spend some time reading the question take in the question breathe in the question underline what are the key points what exactly they want all right and not only that don't only always focus on the knowledge or the factual part of it pay attention to the technique if you realize if you have been following me i have analyzed the type of questions and i've given them i've properly categorized them into some uh, you know based on their characteristics i have uh, categorized them as quantitative negative structure and function and some combo questions where there are two types of uh, issues can be together like quantitative and negative statement question so you have to understand the characteristic and of the question honor it respect it and give the answer accordingly not just whatever you memorize just regurgitate on the paper all right so that is what we are expecting right take it in slowly spend some time reading the question no hurry you're not going to run anywhere 3 uh, 2:15 am you're going to go in to start with paper 3 no hurry what is the hurry you have 2 and 1/2 hours to you know to to formulate your answer 
all right and once you have finished drafting or answering the question make sure your answer tallies back to the question you read the question and you say okay whether it tallies to the question or not if i present this answer to a person he might be able he should be able to guess what was the answer what is the question that means you have hit the bullseye right so this is what we are expecting oh the numbering has run it's actually supposed to be number three i'm a bit confused <laughs> all right so yeah that is number three answer the question not write what you want all right i hope you get that okay next uh i have nearly 14 slides to go you know all right okay mind your language this part is actually quite hilarious <laughs> to speak all right actually it doesn't occur much in english but it always occurs in malay because you know that we are we come from a country where we have a lot of dialects right it, honestly if, I know, I'm, I'm going to be doing this in malay also and of course i'm going to highlight that all right yeah, try to avoid local language. If you see, of course, it's going to be Manglish. <laughs> I have to highlight that. You know, we see it. We see this Manglish in, in your answer scripts. All right. Or Bahasa Roja. Ah, avoid local language is one. Miss La or whatever. You know, Manglish. I don't know how to say because it just doesn't come, uh, you know, it doesn't flash back to me, but it happens. Local language. All right. Okay. Then another one is Bahasa Roja. What I mean by Bahasa Roja is in the same sentence, you construct the sentence in such that you have both English because you all are DLP students. So we're expecting your answers to be in English. So what you do is you put it half in English and half in Malay. That is what I mean by Bahasa Roja. You should not do that. Get your bearings right, children. Children. <laughs> children. Yeah, you are children by my standards. I'm a whole fat. <laughs> All right. Okay. So you have to get your bearings right. If you decide to write, even though you are from DLP background, if you decide to do it in Malay, be my guest, but make sure your answer script is totally in Malay. All right. It's totally in Malay. We don't want mixed languages. Uh, another very common issue that we see is you like to use, especially um, those who are like not very good with their terms and so on. This uh, problem occurs when you all study in Malay, but you try to write your answers in English. So what happens is a lot of inverted commas will come. Ah, a lot of inverted commas will come. That is actually a disadvantage to the candidate. That I can tell you, 100%. All right, when a, when a, when a, when a candidate is writing it in both languages, so that is an issue, you know. So get your bearings right. Which one you want to write? Either you, either you want to do it in English or you don't want to do it exclusively in BM. It's up to you. We still will mark it. Because as an examiner, we do not know whether you are a DLP student or you are a Malay, uh, you know, uh, studying biology, dalam bahasa You We won't know. We have no way of knowing that. Honestly, guys, we have no way of knowing that. So you have to decide. If you decide to write it in Malay, be my guest, make sure everything is in Malay. If you decide to write it in English, make sure everything is in English. Please do this. <laughs> Please do this small thing for us. You know, we can't, you know, switching language um, is actually quite hard, you know. As an examiner, you'll be reading it in, Malay, in English, suddenly it goes into Malay. It gets, it, it takes some time for us to switch our thinking, you know, back to another language so it's a disadvantage to you at the end of the day all these are going to end up as a disadvantage to you all right another biggest problem especially for students who write in english is you all write as your mind speaks exactly it's like a spoken language oh god that's th this actually is hilarious right so these children when they write what they do is they write it as if like they're speaking to the teacher 
sometimes it just you know in the tension moment actually it's actually quite hilarious but i pity those children because sometimes those terms they don't use the proper terms but they try to explain it using their own words and the meaning doesn't get to us even though even if it gets to us since it is not a, a scientific term we have to ignore it that is the worst part you see so that is that that is that that is one thing that i have to warn you guys all right so don't write as your mind speaks do not write in spoken languages write in you know written language you, you know the, you should by now you should be able to tell the difference between the both okay i hope teachers especially teachers who are like uh, following me you know please send this to your students as the last minute all right for them to you know at least you know it's a it's a reminder i'm giving this as a reminder there is actually no content here in this video i am just giving you a reminder all right so please don't do all this okay so that is why within the 6 days in you know, i am giving this video as the earliest so that you can keep on reminding yourselves All right guys these are all the issues that we see you know i'm not creating this these are year in year out we see all this all right yes draw properly okay drawing sometimes the candidate okay when you need to draw especially like in, in for example like that when you put a plant cell into a hypotonic solution what will be the outcome you know what will be the cell like before and after okay maybe the before you have they've given you you have to draw the after can you can you see any difference in this right in this drawing or not guys i tell you like i said we have no feelings for you i won't be where is my ruler i won't be taking the ruler and measuring the size of your of your vacuum for you no i have no time to do that so easy way out what i'm going to do is i'm just going to mark this as wrong because in my opinion you gave the same exactly the same picture like the before even though in your description you said that the um, uh, you know the water you know the solution is hypotonic to the cell the water has entered by diffuse into the cell by osmosis the vacuole has expanded yes all that is uh, your wordings are correct but your picture is not it gives an impact and we have no time to take the scale and a uh, uh, calculate it for you no darling we don't have time for that so when you need to draw a before and after please make sure it is significantly different both of them right this is my stern warning all right because sometimes it's like two marks you know and you just do lose it just like post it because of your this error All right okay another one always remember scientific drawings must be labeled must be labeled that is essential learn to label that no matter what learn to label that okay even though the label has been given you i don't you know it it doesn't matter if you repeat the label fine learn to label that Okay. Uh, I hope you understand. You know, these are all. I know it's it's brutally honest. I'm telling you, these are the the scenario. What happens in the examiner's world? Yeah. Quite mm. oh, right. <laughs> oh God. This is a tragedy. Okay. Whenever we encounter a script which looks like. the spider has practically ran over the pages it really literally looked like that what we will do i don't know what about other examiners what i would do even in school level i will just put the script down because i don't want that writing of the particular person to affect many psychologically because you have to understand you're not dealing with machines you know you're dealing with humans and your presentation which literally look like spider ran over the pages can affect our can affect us mentally you know right and all this can become a disadvantage to you that is why i am not speaking in the way that this is an disadvantage to me 
No. Like I said, I have no feeling and I have no care for you as an examiner. But all this, when I am irritated, when an ex ex an examiner, I am irritated and I can't read properly, the disadvantages is to you. So that is what I would like to emphasize. So please, for the final time, you're going to write biology and some of you who are going to write, you know, kilometers and kilometers and kilometers, please write clearly and legibly. The legible is wrong spelling. I will repair it before I send it in the uh, description box. Okay, because this year, there is a drastic change. I'm not going to say it because it's an insider's news. There's a drastic change of the marking ways due to the COVID-19 and so on. Okay, and we do not know how it will look on our computers. We have no idea. And one thing, guys, you have to understand some of these examiners are very, very, I won't say old, are experienced people who do not like looking at the scripts on the computers. It affects them. It's actually quite taxing for us to be looking like that with our eyes, you know, will be opened like that and try to figure out what exactly you're trying to write on your answer screen. You know, we might be like so burnt out by the time we finish this marking. For some examiners, some who don't have much energy to deal with. All right. And all this is going to be a disadvantage to you. All right. That is my concern. That is my concern. So please write clearly and legibly. Try to put your best. We don't want kindergarten writing. Please. All right. Because of these issues. So I have to warn you. This is one of the things that I need to warn you beforehand. Okay. Uh, share this with your friends. Okay, don't keep this to yourself. Share this to your friend. Who knows? Uh, you know, you can help them by, you know, giving them these warnings. Yeah. All right. Okay. Please. This is strictly. All right. Whether you write in point form or whether you write in um, a, a sentence in an essay form, it doesn't matter, my darlings. It doesn't matter. But make sure, you know, when you see the answer script, make sure this thing comes to your mind. Teacher Insari told me that one point is to one sentence. One point is to one sentence. That is the mantra that always must come to your mind. All right. And make sure if you write in point form, because sometimes in the last minute, you know, I can't be coming and changing the way you'll be doing all this while. If you are doing it in point form, make sure you do it in complete sentence. Right? So strictly one point, one sentence. You know, this is actually connected to the third one that I spoke about. When you have like too many conjunctions, uh, avoid that. All right? Whether you write in the uh, point form or you do the difference in the... In the table form, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter what is the format that you're going to write. Present your answers. It doesn't matter. But make sure it's complete sentence and make sure you keep to the rule one point, one sentence. Easy for the examiner to extract your point and give you award marks accordingly. So when you present your answers in such way, who is at advantage here? It's not me. It's you. Okay, you are going to gain the maximum benefits when you do this, when you follow all. In fact, not only this, when you follow all the things that I'm telling you now. Okay, uh, so though, remember, though we are the one who's going to give you the marks, the advantage is to you. Because, yeah, that is our duty. We just have to give you marks. But I hope that you realize that you are dealing with humans here. Uh, you're dealing with humans here. So stick to this. Stick to it. Yeah. Okay. You might be thinking, you know, I just hope you don't get scared, you know, by the way, I'm putting all this and with my, I don't know, today the black and the green, it makes me vicious. Makes me feel vicious to warn you, to give you this proper warning, you know, makes me feel vicious. <laughs> I hope not. Oh my God, look at my hair. Sometimes you just have the day where the hair doesn't sit properly. 
Avoid repetition. I don't know why this is number four. I have I've just gone bonkers with the numbers, dears. Please, I will repair all this before I send it to the description box. This is humiliating. Number four. I don't know where it gets. I got into number four. I'm so sorry. I will I will I will uh, you know do the renumbering again. I don't know why. Okay, please try to avoid repetition. Some of you, especially students with good language, command. Okay, this is what I call same old vinegar in a different bottle. What you do is you tend to repeat the same idea again and again and expecting marks for that. It is not going to work. Definitely not going to work. All right. Uh, look at the example that I increase the carbon dioxide, increase the temperature. Okay, right. I will give you one mark for that. But the rest of the sentences is the same thing in a different words. This is a very common issue with students with good English. They just play with the words and they think the length of the essay has to do something with the marks that they're supposed to get. And after that, uh, then they blame. Uh, it's like once they are not happy with it, they go for rechecking and the answer is going to be the same. The, the result is going to be the same. This is your problem, dears. You all like to repeat the same thing in it. That's why I say, oh, same old vinegar in different uh, bottles. But the content is the same. And always remember, in bio, we only award mark once. Never twice, never thrice for the same thing. Look at that. Huh. This is how they all will answer. Okay. So try to avoid repetition. That is not going to help you in any ways. That is why a draft is super important when you are dealing with essay. To avoid repetition, keep your sentence short and sweet, straight to the point. Okay, all this combined to avoid repetition. Because if you try to do your essays without a proper draft and so on, these are the problems that you may encounter. Okay, this is the problem that you may encounter. Okay, remember that. All right. Okay, next. Again. Okay. Try not to do more than two essays. Okay, some, I know, I know teachers, you may say, how can I subsidize the students? Yes, I agree. But you have to always remember that during the grading, your grading and the scoring, we only will, no matter even of all the four essays you do, I will only take two. Okay, and most of the time, most of the time, okay, these children, because the teacher has advised them to do all the four essays and so on, what they will do is another, only the two will be good. Other two will be like lousy because they know that, uh, you know, it's just, they're just doing for the sake of doing. Okay, so that is why do, doing a draft is actually super important. It is super important for you to do your draft for your essays and you choose wisely before you do an answer. But if, if, if at all you may, sometimes it happens that you really have, can't decide, okay, maximum three, not four, please. Please don't waste our time. Okay, please don't waste yours as well. Right, because uh, by the tarma of marking, we have to mark all four. But this will definitely irritate us and the feelings won't be mutualistic anymore. So don't test your examiners until they have this horn coming. You know, <laughs> we don't want your examiners to have a horn. Okay, that is not good for you. Your examiners having a horn. <laughs> That is so, so funny. Imagine an examiner having a horn. <laughs> okay. But yeah, you know, yeah, it's a joke. Yeah, you know, we take it lightly. But then, please, okay, choose wisely. That is why doing a draft is very important. Because these are all advantages to you guys, not me. Okay. So try to do this. Okay. Next. We get this. No matter how many, to how high, how hard we try to hide this, we get this. Please do not write some, what I mean by love letter is not like you're having feelings for them. No. Unnecessary communicative attempts. You know, we, we have, 
of course, speaking from experience, speaking from experience, uh, we have got like this, you know, I am an AIDS patient. The, the script is pretty, practically empty. I am an AIDS patient. I'm going to die soon. I hope you will be sympathized. You know, but this is not in the language that I'm speaking. Um, um, sympathize with my situation and uh, yeah, help me to pass. Do you know that we have to report this? Your action of trying to communicate with the examiner has to be reported. So this might cause your results to be suspended. Okay. Ah, keputusan digantung. It may happen and it has happened before. So please do not do take any unnecessary steps to communicate other than your answer scripts with the examiner. Okay? Sometimes we do get political notes there. Yeah, we do. Unnecessary bad words. Yeah, we do. Okay? And all this will be reported. Okay? So please, if, you know, maybe you say that, oh, this is just a, it's the last day of the exam. You know, bio is being some, for some of you, it's going to be the last exam. It's like, oh, no, chill, guys. You know, oh, chill, chill, chill. But your chill will, will freeze you. <laughs> will freeze your result. Okay? So, yeah, please. Do not, do not attempt this. Okay? Yeah, this is another reminder. Okay, next. Try not to avoid the word, uh, try to avoid the word die in any of your answers. Like, example, just say because this year we're expecting eutrophication to come. All right? For essay, because long time it didn't come. So they say, ah, this will cause eutrophication, thus everything dies. Greenhouse effect occurs, everything dies. Guys, you have to understand whether you have eutrophication or not, all life organisms will die one day. You, me, the fish, whatever. Everything is going to die. Okay? So don't focus on the final, final terminal, uh, uh, you know, the effect. No. Focus more on the process of the dying when the eutrophication occurs. What will happen? This will cause the um, uh, microorganisms. Ah, we have a lot of uh, anaerobic microorganisms, you know, utilizing the depleting the oxygen in the water, you know, increasing the BOD. Thus, it causes the aquatic organisms to die. Focus on the process. Not straight into, you know, it dies from the first step. You go last to the 13th step, which is die. Do you know that sometimes we do get in a marking scheme, we do get that it has to be sequence. The sequence must be there. You cannot jump more than two sequence. Uh, if you jump more than two sequence, then you won't get marks. These are a few things that only an examiner will know. All right, so try to avoid the word. This happens, everything dies. It's quite depressing, you know, to look at the word die. You know, we want the life, we want to live. And you and all you can say is everything dies. Oh, please have mercy, guys. Please, please. Okay, so try to avoid what I'm saying is not wrong for you to say that it dies, but focus more on the process. Okay, all of you, most of you, not all of you, most of you, you forget the process and you go jump straight to the final part. That is actually not going to give you any marks. Right? So that is one. Next, avoid the terms that are not in the book. Guys, I am so sorry to inform you. I am super sorry. I regret, in fact, to inform you that your syllabus, your current syllabus is actually quite old already. All right, it is actually quite old already in the sense that some of the some of the things in this has actually even been obsolete already. If you see the new syllabus, it's no more a lot of things that you were learning now, it's no more in that syllabus. Right? 
But what some candidates do is they Google it up, some of the advanced teachers and so on, because, you know, they're so scared of these hot uh, questions and so on. What they do is they, they get some advanced points to put in there, which is not within the limit of our syllabus, your current syllabus, you know, the one that you are seeking for. Okay. So what is what this will happen is, guys, most probably your advanced facts is not in the, in the marking scheme. So when you don't have that in the marking scheme, you know what would happen? The examiner cannot award you marks. And we don't have, sorry, how advanced you are. We have no time to Google it up for you. We don't, we just don't have the time. We just don't have the energy to Google it up for you. Like I said, because I have no feelings for you. I don't know you. You are just a number. Okay? So try to keep your answers within the limit of what you learned in your book and your syllabus. Hots or not hots, everything is within the boundary of your, of your syllabus. Okay? So I understand some of you, you know, you get, you know, but don't blame us for not awarding you marks because it is not in the marking scheme. We cannot simply go and find some new things and no, we have a marking scheme to honor as an examiner. Though I know that, yeah, this is the new thing that has been around and so on, but I can't, I cannot. I cannot simply award you marks just because you are so advanced. Okay, so don't do that. So keep your answers simple within the limits of what you have learned and supposed to learn and supposed to know. I'm so sorry to say this to you, but that's the fact. All right, next. All right, avoid giving points that are not biology related. Oh, this happens all the time. <laughs> and it is quite hilarious. Okay. You know, my type is like whenever I encounter this type of things, I laugh. <laughs> I just laugh. I pity the children, but I laugh. I laugh it out. Okay. Like example, this is an SPM question. And there was one SPM question very, very long time ago. Very, very long time. In fact, it was one of the first year that I started marking and so on. Um, this, uh, uh, you know, it actually shows a picture of a Down syndrome children. Where they both are like laughing and so on. You know, look at what is the answer the students gave. You know, it was pretty hilarious. They say the children are crazy. And they're always laughing. How am I not to laugh? Come on, Down syndrome. The points for Down syndrome, it's crazy. is not biologically related. You cannot call penyakit gila. You say gila. It's actually supposed to be mental retardation it's not crazy crazy means different it's not mental it is supposed to be mental retardation and just because the picture is showing the children are laughing and being happy and gay you cannot say down syndrome people laugh a lot in fact in that case i am a down syndrome person because i laugh all the time for everything even students make mistakes also i laugh then i'm down syndrome Oh my God, but then that, that is how we get the answer scripts, you know, it is hilarious. Ah, another thing, you know, we have a lot of folklores, we have, uh, you know, all the patua patua, right? I don't know what they call patua in English, I really have no idea. But yeah, like for example, the sambal in Nasi Dama story, <laughs> this was hilarious. You know, we say that Indian, Malay, Chinese, they say that, you know, this chili all causes a bit of heatiness and so on. It's actually, uh, I, I don't know, maybe... Why is because this chili all, what they do is they increase the, the metabolic activity. But in, in medical terms, in biology terms, there's no such thing as heaty. And the children go and write, thus it is heaty to the body, can cause numbness. <laughs> Out of this mouth. It is just super hilarious, you know. God, but then I pity the children. I really pity the children. So what I'm trying to say is, okay, jokes aside, okay? What I'm trying to say is keep your points within the limit of the biology and make sure it is biology related. 
don't use folklore you know petua petua nenek kebayan or indian malay chinese you know in even in indian community we have a lot of things you know this hiti thing you know pineapple is tajam you know malay say the pineapple is tajam lah you know these type of words try not to use this type of words okay spiciness have you ever saw that word spiciness causes heatiness in the book so because these children just whatever it comes to their mind they just write that is the problem all right okay then after that they say ah down syndrome come on come on you have to remember you know yeah of course i say that don't always leave anything empty but then this is just ridiculous <laughs> all right so don't do that yeah okay so yeah we have uh, i'm so sorry about the numbering i'll rearrange it and i will i will put it in the description box yeah but yeah so that was the last slide so my word my final word for you in this presentation today is uh, though it is super important to have the knowledge yes of course you cannot i am not denying the fact that the knowledge is important but one thing that you have to understand is no matter how much knowledge you have your final presentation to the examiner is going to determine your marks no point having a lot here but if you do not know how to present it then then I, i tell you it beats the purpose so you need to know some tricks you need to know the hacks and you need to understand how exactly an examiner operate in order for you to reap the maximum benefits on or to your advantage right so yeah this is exclusively brought to you by the teacher sari for those who thinks that uh, you you are you are you're happy with my presentation yes please do subscribe don't forget to subscribe okay uh, so that is the most little thing that you can do for me but yeah more going to come so this is the first that i'm going to work first or the second i'm not sure maybe it depends on my schedule but then yeah there are, there are more to come all depending on how much time i have i'll try to help you this is why i call this the final countdown yeah before the spm i will give you more it's not necessarily 30 minutes huh? <laughs> because yeah it's not necessarily 30 minutes but then i will give you more i'll try to give you more all short short how much i can help you before your spm for by you all right so with that stay tuned stay tuned more to come okay and um, yeah stay blessed stay blessed and uh, yeah thank you so much for being with me today and uh, more to come so i'll see you next all right okay bye bye